Backups is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you think about programming. However, in the grand scheme of software development in general, backups are definitely important and there's things that you need to be doing about them. So in this video, I just want to talk about some of the considerations you should be making as it relates to backups, as well as types of backups, and then some storage options, some tools and techniques, and you will actually find that there might be some programming involved to make that happen. The first consideration to make as it pertains to backups is, do you even need to make backups? And for the majority of people, the answer to that is going to be absolutely yes. For me personally, I tend to try to mentally segregate my data into two categories, data that I absolutely cannot lose under any circumstance, and then data that can just be replaced if I somehow lose it. And that's data that I just have as a convenience, more or less. Some examples in my case of data that absolutely cannot be lost is things like coding that I've done, particularly coding that I did when I was younger, as well as all the source files for any video that's ever been produced on this channel, as well as thumbnails and artwork, things like that. And then on the flip side is some of the like convenience data. So I have a bunch of Linux ISOs just so I don't have to re-download them, but obviously if I lost all those, I could just re-download them. So I don't try to back those up. Now, a lot of what we're talking about here is related to personal information, but I also want to talk a little bit about what you need to back up in your professional life. When I think of professional information needs to be backed up, there's three things that come to mind. The first is source code, the second is configuration, and the third is all other data. What's really cool about backing up source code is you pretty much often don't actually have to do it, and that's true if you are using a modern source control system such as Git. Because of the way Git is designed, which is that every person that has a Git repository on their computer has a full copy of that Git repository is completely identical to the one they cloned it from, it means that there's so many copies of different code out there. Think about something like the Linux kernel and all the people that work on that. There's probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of cloned Git repositories of the Linux kernel across the world. And even if the project is much smaller, let's just say a solo project, even in that case, you still probably have three copies of your code. You have the copy that's on your Git repository that uses your main one. You have a copy that you've cloned to your local computer. And then you have a remote copy that you use to deploy to the web or wherever else. This means that at any given time, you have three copies of your code and you didn't actually try to do any backups. The second type of thing you might want to back up is configuration. And when I think of this, I think of stuff like web server configuration, Linux VM configuration, and things like that. The thing about configuration, of course, is that you can always reconfigure it. So it's not like you're going to lose unique pieces of information. However, you will have to put the effort in to reconfigure it. And if it's for a service that can't be down for a long period of time, then that could be a problem. So for me, I like to take snapshots of my Linux virtual machines. Most of them are in the cloud, and I do that to make sure that if I ever had a problem, I could just restore from that snapshot. And it really doesn't matter where you're hosting, unless it's like a, like a free tier, then maybe it wouldn't be available. But for most hosts, you can get just snapshots that they'll do regularly. Some of them even come with schedules. I know for sure GCP, Azure, and AWS, I know they all have scheduled snapshots that you can do for any VM that you have hosted there. But even smaller hosts like DigitalOcean or Linode, they also offer them too. And for the most part, it's fairly cheap because the snapshot will only contain the amount of data that's actually on the VM, and they'll also compress it, and it's pennies you know, per gig at the very most. So if you're to back up, say, 20 gigabyte VM, then it's going to cost you maybe 40 cents per month, which is like nothing. And the last professional thing you might want to back up is going to be all other data. And I think about all the data is this is most likely going to be the chunk of data that's actually quite large. So this is going to be things like database dumps, file assets, and just bulk data that doesn't fit into either code or configuration. The simplest, easiest way to back up this stuff is just to use a service that automatically replicates it in a multi-regional kind of way, meaning you upload your data into what logically looks like one spot, but it's actually two to three different spots across the country. The next best option is to use a similar kind of service, but maybe it's not cloud storage that is automatically replicated across regions, but maybe it's just one piece of cloud storage that's in one specific region. You can still work with that because if you upload all your stuff to that place, that's at least your data in two spots, the place it got uploaded from and then that cloud store. If you don't want to use cloud store like programmatically or anything like that, then of course you could use Google Drive, you could use Dropbox or other cloud, just generic cloud options. And these are options you can use, whether it's personal or professional data. It's most likely you're going to store personal data in something like Dropbox or Google Drive. For the professional stuff, if you're already in an ecosystem with one of the big players, GCP, Azure, and AWS, then you're probably going to use their solution rather than something like Drive or Dropbox. 
And then on to the programming bit, you know, the tools and techniques of doing backups is actually pretty vast. They offer tons of different tools, particularly those around file transfer between your local drives and remote cloud drives. But you can just write your own bash script or even Python or whatever language you feel like using. So most people have probably heard of something called AWS S3. That's Amazon's storage solution for cloud files, but the S3 protocol is implemented in a number of different spots. What's really cool about that is you might be using a service that allows for cloud files to be uploaded and cloud backups, but it's also S3 compatible, meaning you can use the S3 command line utility, the same one that you would use to upload to Amazon. You can use that instead to upload to your service. And S3, like a lot of other file transfer utilities, supports the same kind of stuff like rsync does to where it can dedupe files. So you can say upload only what's changed from the remote server and it'll automatically do that. It'll, it'll download the entire file list from your cloud files. It'll compare it to what you have locally and then it will do uploads. It'll do deletes remotely and then remote copies. And that's good because it means it doesn't have to do a full backup of all your stuff, only the first time. And this is the way that I tend to handle my backups. I do a backup maybe every every week or so of all my stuff, and it only uploads the stuff that's changed. I schedule that using a cron job at some early time in the morning, and I never even really notice it. My data is just backed up automatically. And it's not a super long script, maybe like six or seven lines, just to say, okay, I want to upload these folders and that folder, and, you know, dedupe everything, and then just it just goes and does it. If you're just using a cloud VM with a large disk to do your backups, that's perfectly fine too. You can use something like rsync, which will work just like S3 in deduping everything. The only thing I'll say about using a VM for backups is that attaching disk space to a VM is often a lot more expensive than getting disk space on like a generic cloud store solution. That's right for the video. I know backups aren't super related to programming, but it really is something that developers need to be thinking about because it matters both in your personal and professional life. And so if you've made this far in the video, go ahead and tell me below in the comments if you do backup your data and tell me exactly how you do it. Post your backup strategies and what you seem to find works well. If you have any questions or comments about anything I mentioned in this video, definitely leave those below in the comments as well. And as always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.